Welcome, everybody. This is a humorous history podcast, and we are the Goofy Historians. Today, we're going to jump right in to the Battle of Hayton. Battle of Hayton? Battle of Hatton. How do you pronounce this? Battle of Hayton. Hayton. Hatin. 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 Oh, is it? It's the Battle of Hatin. So we're going to jump right into the Battle of Hatin, which sets up the Third Crusade and introduces the world to Richard the Lionheart. Now, as always, we're not real historians, but we hope this is mostly true and somewhat funny. If you enjoy this, please hit subscribe and remember truth when necessary but humor at all costs. Okay, so here we are with the Battle of Hattin. I just want to do the drum roll again. All right, so this took place 834 years ago in the year 1187, and they did it on our Independence Day, the 4th of July, which is convenient because we could remember this. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so 1187 is the year and the date really is July 4th. Um, The belligerents, I love this word. So when you're talking about a battle, the two people that are fighting are called belligerents. It doesn't mean they're drunk, although they could be drunk, but if they were fighting, they were belligerents. Um, On one side, you had the entire kingdom of Jerusalem, the country of Tripoli, city-state of Antioch, all the Knights Templars, all the Knights Hospitallers, and this crazy dude Raymond against Saladin. That's where I should have another drum roll. Is it Saladin or Saladin? Saladin? Saladin. Anyway, the Saladin Saladin the Magnificent, and he was magnificent, and he was the leader of um, the Muslims. Actually, there's another way to say his army at that point in the Levant was called the Ayubib Salante or something like that. Um, But the battle took place, and we're going to talk about that today. Um, At the end of the day, I'll give you a spoiler alert, because again, this happened like a thousand years ago. You should know already. Um, the, um, The Christians lost about uh 20,000 but it was all their elite knights um the muslims lost more than that they say um a considerable amount um but the um the christians lost most of the damn army and um we can start with this character raymond of shaflion because he's the one that started this whole damn thing i'm not i know i'm mispronouncing it but the Raymond that raided the Muslim caravan, that yeah, son of a gun, yeah. he's the one, really, if you think about it, he started this whole thing, which ended up into the Third Crusade. And there was a, a treaty of some sort, and they weren't supposed to raid the caravan. And he's like, no, I'm going to raid it. So what happened, right? That was when, is that how it started? Yeah. Right. Okay. To go back to the beginning, Luke went on to the beginning. There's the never a beginning in history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, 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 people who don't know, right, the crusade started in 1095, right, right after the turn of the century, right, right after the turn of the millennium, right? And basically, at the turn of millennium, everybody thought, everybody, Europe thought Jesus wasn't going to come back because it's been a thousand years since Jesus was born or died or something, right? And like forever, Jesus hasn't come back. He didn't come back, right? And there was sort of an idea that, well, the reason Jesus couldn't come back is because, well, he's going to come back to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is held by the Muslims, right? So we got to we gotta help him out a little bit. So Urban, Urban II in 1095 called all the good Christian knights to go down and take back the Holy Land for Christ, right? And... They actually did. They went back. It took him five years, four four years, and they took back Jerusalem. And anybody who died in the crusade got to go directly to heaven. Right? Sweet. 
Yeah, you know, not bad. In uh, Bernard, this is what if you died on the way to the crusade? I think you get a waiver as long as you made a good effort, right? But if you that didn't, would suck if you died like you got <laughs> sick and you didn't make it, and you're like you get to heaven and God's well, like yeah, I don't know about you dying by disease. I don't know if that counts. I think you had to die by a Muslim to get to heaven. I don't know, but. Uh, Bernard de Chavot said, you know, when you go and kill a Muslim, you're not killing a human being, you're killing evil, right? <laughs> because the Pope, as Hitler said, right, you say a lie long enough over and over and over again, no matter how absurd it is, people are going to believe it, right? All so right, let's if, get back to the Battle of Hayton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like you and I, right? But so in order to get everybody to go down and kill the Muslim, they said Muslims were eating Christian babies, right? They, they were having these in, in, in pizza parlors, right? <laughs> you know? uh, so pizza you gate. Gotta, right. You gotta go down and kill these Muslims. So and these and they repeated it over and over again. And the funny thing is the Christians in the Holy Land, because there were some, right? Because what's interesting, Muslims could not live in Christian Europe, but Christians could live in the Muslim countries, they had to pay a tax, but they they could live there peacefully. As a matter of fact, many Christians, when they were persecuted by other Christians, chose to live in Muslim lands because all they had to do was be a tax and they could live there peacefully. But that's the, so they they do take the Holy Land. They do take Jerusalem. They kill 40,000 Muslims and Jews in the city of Jerusalem. But the problem is all the most of the knights that came down for the crusade after they took Jerusalem went home right so now all the muslims are dead all the jews are dead and there's like 200 knights in Jerusalem and they're going well we can't get a country in Jerusalem without anybody there so they sort of had to invite the muslims back in you know to be the weavers and the butchers and the and the candlestick makers. So after a, a little while, after the first generation, most of the Christians who stayed in the Holy Land had to go native, right? They started eating Muslim food. They started dressing like Muslims because it fit the desert, right? They, they, they weren't going to wear wool, wool from England. They were going to wear, you know, like the silk and the robes, the white robes and, and the, the hats. What do you call them? You know, right, right. And uh, they were introduced to soap. Right? They were introduced to tea. And they were introduced to because uh, at that time, most the Islamic countries were going through sort of an Islamic renaissance. They were the high point of their. They, they were doing. They invented algebra. Right. They were advancing in medical science. But what? So after the main body of the Christians left. The Christians who were left in Jerusalem came to terms with the Muslims, right? The Islamic people around them because they were like outnumbered 10 to one and they were trading with them. They were uh, having business with them. They were getting into alliance, you know, one, get one sect of Islam against another sect of Islam. But every once in a while, a group of knights from Europe came trotting down, right, with this old belief that all Islams eat babies, right, in pizza parlors. And they're going, well, you guys look like Muslims, right? What's we got to make the, we have to make the Holy Land great again, right? So all this little, all these treaties and getting along with Islams, they threw it out the window and they started killing Muslims again, right? And that's where the Raymond of, of uh, Chatillon, he was one of these guys who came down and he sort of like threw a monkey wrench in everything the Christians had been trying to establish in the Holy Land through uh, real politique, right? Getting along with everybody, trying to survive, trying to have a multicultural country they could live in. You know? So, and at this time, Saladin was trying, so Saladin was trying to unite all of the Islamic countries, the Sunni and the, and the Turks and the uh, Shia. 
So he, he was spending most of his time fighting other Muslims, right? But once Raymond of Chatillon came, he attacked the Muslim caravans that they had got these peace treaties so they could trade with them. He captured Saladin's sister. He actually sent boats to attack Mecca, right? So, you know, he pretty much pissed everybody off and he's pissing off the Christian natives who are going, you know, we spent a hundred years trying to establish our lives here and you're gonna throw it all down the drain with your, your ignorance, right? But he does. <laughs> And, and, so, and so this guy, because there's, there's two Raymonds, let's make sure we get them straight. So this guy is Raymond of Chatillon. Where the hell is Chatillon? It was he, did he just arrive and stir up shit or had he been there a while? No, he, he, he was one of the guys from Europe. Yeah, but he, uh, how did he, he get in control? He, 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 Where's Chatillon? Mustering in from Europe and was going to make the, the Crusades great again so he could go back to killing Muslims because he didn't respect any of the treaties that the... Now the third generations of Christian knights are there and they've, they've set up sort of an equilibrium where they could live peacefully with the Muslims. So he right. shattered that. But the other Raymond was a Raymond of Tripoli. Oh, okay, Raymond of Tripoli. Yeah. Okay, so he, after, he was, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so Raymond of Tripoli is the third or fourth generation crusader and he's been there, he's never been to Europe. He's the one, Raymond speaks perfect Arabic. He understands, he's read the Quran, right? I mean, he's still a Christian. I mean, he's still a sincere Christian. He's just read the Quran and he speaks Arabic and he's willing to live peacefully with Muslims. He sees them as human beings, right? Where the... Um, All right, well, who's, who's in control? Which Raymond has more power? Well, initially, uh, well, there was... Um, Let's talk about the siege of Tiberia because they're all there together. Yeah, and so we can jump up to that. Okay, but what happens? So, so there was a, there was like a civil war in the Holy Land between the Christians, right? The ones were, initially, Raymond of Tripoli was the leading it, but he got thrown out. He got usurped, right? And then the other, um, Raymond took power, right? Okay, and before that, with Raymond of Tripoli and um, Baldwin was the king before him. He was called the leper king. He actually beat Saladin in open battle, what, twice, right? So it's not like the Christians couldn't do it, right? Yeah. Before this Raymond of Chatillon showed up, the, the Christians were holding their own. Yeah. And that's, what's, that's why it's, the battle of uh, Hattin is so important because the two armies were basically equal, you know, or maybe the Christians were even a little bit better. There was no reason for the Christians to lose this battle, right? Well, they the were outnumbered, but they had armor and horses and everything. <laughs> yeah, they had, they had, but there was no reason for them to lose that battle, right? The you know only, what's crazy is the armor is that they would shoot you with an arrow. And so you'd have arrows stuck in you but you'd be okay because it was like a like a bulletproof vest in a way. It still hurt, but you could get shot. You could look like a porcupine. Some of these characters. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's talk about the battle already. What what where are we now? So they 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 had to break out of the siege. Okay, of Tiberius. What happened? Okay, so Saladin, right now, Saladin's pissed off at the Christians because they broke all the treaties, right? And so he goes up and he takes the city of. Tiberias, right, which is on the Sea of Galilee, you know, where Jesus walked on water, right? So it's that part of the Holy Land, right? Uh, so he takes it, well, he doesn't take it, but he he puts it under siege. His armies are surrounding the city, but it's on Lake Tiberias, also called the Sea of Galilee, right? So it could still be supplied from the water. It's not like they're going to starve to death, but they can't get out, right? And so Raymond of Tripoli, who's the good one, right? And he knows he's been working with Saladin. He's fought Saladin, right? He goes, no, it's not a problem. This happens all the time, right? <laughs> you got to understand this is the Holy Land. Everybody's like has these little squabbles, right? So what you do is you go up to the Sea of Galilee, right? Below him, right? Go up along the coast, right? And then put Saladin under siege, 
right? So there's a, like a double siege type situation. And he says, that's gonna last a month, right? And then we're gonna come to terms, right? We're gonna, we're gonna give him some money and he's gonna give us some money and we're gonna sign a contract. And this happens every year, right? This is not something you wanna, wanna but Raymond of Chatillon says, that's not, that's not the way knights do it, right? So instead of like going down to the coast where you would have like the, you know, the ocean on one side and, and you know, so that's protecting you and you, you would always have water and you'd have food, you'd have all these, you'd have a supply chain. Raymond goes, no, we're gonna go straight at them. We're gonna attack them and we're gonna attack them through this shortcut. Cause look at the map, right? It's only like a, it's only like 12 miles, right? We yeah. just, we can just go straight there, attack him head on. And Raymond's going, no, that's a desert. There's no water, right? Yeah, I think there, it was 19 Raymond, miles. July 4th, it's, it's, it's 105 degrees outside yeah. of here in Arbor, right? And he says, well, you're just a sissy. This is, you know, you gotta, you gotta man up. You know, not, not just armor. There, ninety pounds of armor this shit weighed. Could you imagine that marching in the desert with ninety pounds of armor? <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. So there, there, there's Raven. So, and what's funny is though, even though all of the um, the natives who are there know they're going to go into the Valley of Death. This is this is like the Charge of the Light Brigade. They know the they're going to Charge of the Light Brigade. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! It's a giant Charge of the Light Brigade. It was the <laughs> biggest Charge of the Light Brigade in the history of Light Brigades, because it was twelve hundred knights, twelve hundred so, dudes on horses, just full of armor. Giddy up! Where's the fucking camels? Yeah, 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 and and there's also King Guy, right? Who's actually the king of Jerusalem at that time, and he's a real goofus. He doesn't know what to do, but he's ends up following Raymond of Chatillon, and Raymond of Tripoli is going, "You, you guys are idiots, right?" But they go ahead and follow him, right? They go through this desert, and Raymond goes, "We're dead. We're just dead. We're gonna die. This is it, right?" <laughs> forward right and then and then uh uh saladin's sitting there outside tripoli waiting oh, for the double saladin's waiting for the double siege and he goes well why aren't they coming we, we're, we're ready to make we're ready to deal right and he goes they're coming through the the, the, the valley of <laughs> he goes, Are these guys complete idiots so he goes he takes his army away from the siege and he blocks because now they're coming you know, perpendicular to, and they're between these these mountains, right? So they're coming straight towards. So Salon, we'll just block them. We'll just block them. Once they pass the last water source, we'll block them from behind and in front. So they got only, yeah, only six miles to go, but there's no water, right? There's absolutely no water. There's no food. They're horses and their armor, and they're baking in their armor, right? And so once and, and they put a uh, Raymond of Tripoli uh, up front, right? And he's because he's the only one who actually knows the land, right? He's been there. This he's is the this only thing. one. That, this is surprised they didn't get lost for 40, 40 <laughs> years. So 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 Raymond's up there, and he go, and he sees what's happening. He sees Solid Solid is beginning to cut off their path. So he sends messages back to Raymond and King Guy. He says, we go now or we're dead, right? So he gets on his heart, ready to charge. And he's like, come on, let's go. And he looks back and, 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 they're, and they're setting up a tent. <laughs> and he's going, why are you setting up a tent? He says, well, because it's too hot. It's the middle of the day. I go, we're being cut off. So by the time they realize what's, they're cut off from both sides. And during this time, they could have made if they would have just kept going through the night. They would have kept going. That's the thing. They could have. They, they would have. They, ha, they would have had to. Fight Why would them. you stop? And you don't have any water. I don't have any water. I'm dying of thirst. I think I'm going to stop here for the night. <laughs> let's let's stop here for the night. So Jesus. yeah, Raymond's going there. It's, it's just no wonder they lost their cross. But they had the cross. That's the thing. They had right, the but they cross. had the holy cross. So they had to get so that you know the cross that Jesus died on. Apparently, right? Another monk in the first crusade found it under a church because of a vision of the 
vision of the whole Mary came to him at night and told him there was some wood under the church and that's that's the cross. And so they have this cross in there. So they're in like three sections. That's There's, the ultimate relic. That's the ultimate relic. Yeah. The so ultimate they relic. have it. So, and it's, why do they take it on to battle? Why do you take the ultimate relic on your charge of a light brigade? Well, probably yeah. they thought, well, you know, these are people who grew up reading the Old Testament, right? So it's like they thought maybe just like Moses, you know, the water springed forth from in the middle of the desert and then there's manna that shows yeah. up. The they place. were hoping that. They were hoping that. So, I mean, why wouldn't you, right? So they're, they truly believe that they are the chosen of God, right? Why would God <laughs> yeah, give you, give turn you. on them and yield them over to the, uh, the pagans? the infidels it was it's just it, it was impossible for them it was impossible for people like Raymond de Chatillon or King Guy to ever they were so convinced of their correctness right that God was on their side that God was never going to let the Muslims win a battle even though they have they'd lost a, a battle and, and right. plus their knights were hospitalers and yeah, hospitalers. templars they were the hospitalers. ultimate fanatics these guys yeah, would never you could offer them anything and they would be like no i'm a i'm a knight of templar they were <laughs> serious fanatics the <laughs> most <laughs> fanatical of any fanatics in the history of fanatics these guys yeah. well especially at that time because they had just replaced the original masters of those things with new recruits from Europe because the old ones had gone native. So you have like really unprepared, I mean, they were probably good at fighting battles in Europe, you know, in, 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 in you know, uh, Aquitaine or somewhere, but they were completely out of their depth in desert warfare. You know, Islam, Islam had been fighting de desert warfare for like, you know, forever. Millennium. That's all they know is desert warfare. Anyways, so they, they, they divide, the Christians divide their army in three part. There's a Raymond of Tripoli up front because he's the one who knows the way, right? And though he's getting no respect because he's gone native. And then in the middle, they have King Guy with his bishops. He has like two or three bishops and the cross and the big tent, Right, that, that, that King Guy has to go in, stops periodically, so because he, he gets too hot, I guess. Right, he wants to get up his tent. See, you know what the problem with King Guy is? He really <laughs> wanted to. Okay, the guy he he wanted to be on like a real like a crusade, like a giant crusade coming from Europe where they had, because like when we talk about the next one with the crusades, that was a different thing. They had, they had so many different jobs you know there were so many clergy in the crusades they had accountants and engineers and all this stuff but this wasn't that this was 19 miles <laughs> yeah, this was 19 yeah. miles. <laughs> and, and and yeah and it's not like and they were up probably against the best general of the middle ages besides richard the lion and richard wasn't there yet right, right. so solid in probably the best general of the Middle Ages was taken on probably the worst general of the Middle Ages, right? I don't know yeah. if you can compare that to the Jets taking on, you know, the football team Jets taking on, like, I don't know, uh, the Ravens or something. But they were totally outmatched, right? Which was sad because they, they, they were equal on paper. They were probably equal strength, just that there was really, really bad decisions made. So... So there's King Guy in the middle with his tent, his big tent, the cross and the bishops. And then behind him was a Raymond of uh, uh, Chatillon, whatever. He's, he's at the back, he's bringing up the end. And, but they've cut out on both sides and now they're coming up on the sides too. So as they're going through the, the uh, Bedouins, you know, who live in the desert are coming, sneaking up to them, shooting arrows at them and they're not even shooting the, the horses. I mean, they're not shooting the knights, they're shooting their horses, right? Yeah. So now, which, you know, I feel sorry for the horses more than the knights, but the knights, so they've lost their horses, which means these knights are now in armor without a horse. Right? <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> so they're just complete goofuses. No matter how good you are, if you're 
walking around in a tin can when it's 120 outside. I would take that shit off immediately. I would take, take that shit off. And then off. I'd get a bow and, and arrow. And there's no water. And so, and so while this is going, so the Christians are being boxed in, and uh, it's clear that Saladin has these camels coming up from the Sea of Galilee. So all of his horses are getting water all the time, and they're like, and they could, and they could see the, <laughs> <laughs> could see them. So like, and uh. and they're bringing up fresh arrows. So there's camels bringing arrows. There's they're bringing food. And they're just out of reach of the Christians, and they're like they're eating lunches and drinking water and shooting them and shooting their horses. And a lot of them, a lot of the knights just say, God is obviously not on our side. <laughs> He's on their side, right? So there so there's people deserting and becoming Muslim, right? It says I, you know, Allah is great. Yeah. And then uh so they 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 oh, and then Saladin starts burning this really acrid weed, right? So it's so the smoke is so there's blowing smoke, over them. The wind is behind them, and the smoke is coming down, and it's, so it's smoky. And there, and so, and King Guy has his tent up, so he goes in his tent, and they sort of huddle down all night while the Islamic forces are shooting arrows at them taking out their horses and then when the morning comes so now they're facing east and they got it in solid attack right when the sun came up so the sun is shining directly in their eyes right so what they and then he started the the, the fires again the fires flowing in the opposite direction now smoke so the smoke is in their eyes this really acid smoke and the sun is in their eyes, so what they can't see, when they get the smoke away, like they're being blinded by the sun, and then uh, Salen attacks. <laughs> yeah. And and they and they get all the, the so the forces instead of like fighting where they are, they sort of for some reason sort of all migrate up to this hill, which is called the Hill of Hatim, which is. <laughs> Which is actually the place where Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount. No shit. That is, that's the Sermon on the Mount, you know, like, really? love, love thy neighbor, right? And, and uh, turn the other cheek, which I don't know if Christians ever really believed. But So that's but, where he did the Sermon on the Mount. I thought it was named because of horns. Yeah, it yeah. Like it, horns. It, it, it look, look, looks like horns, but that's actually where Jesus did the Sermon on the Mount. Everywhere they went on this crusade, the the Europeans were like, "Oh my God, this is where Jesus did this," and just as where they were just, "Whoa!" And it never oh, like you're dying of thirst. Don't worry about the Bible right now. And they did. They died. They they probably thought well, yeah, they were well, well, already in hell. Well, well, what happens is they go up on the hill. First, they go up on the hill, and King Guy is saying, "Well, come down," and they're saying, "We're not coming down because we're thirsty." So King Guy goes up on the hill. So they're now all up on the hill. And King Guy sets up his tent. <laughs> Again. He loves that tent. He loves the tent. So he goes into his tent and they're surrounded. And then they, uh, the, the Islam, and they have their cross up on top of the hill with King Guy in his tent. And oh, so Raymond of Tripoli finally says, Well, I'm going to attack because so he takes what army he has and he charges the Islamic army that's surrounding him. He and makes the Islamic it through. army. Yeah, the Islamic army just opens up and lets him go. Yeah, yeah here's our buddy Raymond. Come on, Raymond. Raymond, this way is the water over here. There's the water. Why are you so, hanging out with those nutballs? <laughs> so Raymond, the one, the one arm, the one knight who actually knows how to fight in this circumstance is gone. He doesn't come back, and you know that's what he should have done: is turn around and take take Islam from behind so they get like a a wet. But no, he's gone. He goes straight to Tip Tripoli rescues his wife go oh, because it's his wife it's his wife in tripoli so he goes he takes off and saladin lets him go because if he rescues his wife he gets water and he's out of the story right and it, 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 it's sort of a scandal because people you know well why did he do it right but uh but he did rescue his wife and he and he, and he saved his troops 
That was but the th- reason for them leaving in the first place because his wife had wrote him a letter and saying that they could they could be under siege and she could be in trouble. Like they didn't have their own trouble. But anyway, so they all pretty much most of right. them are killed. Right. So Raymond, so the other knights try to do what Raymond of Tripoli just did, charge him hoping they're gonna open up, but they don't. <laughs> they don't open yeah. up. Or they open up and then they close in on them uh, and destroy them. That's and what then they, they would do. Yeah. The ones that are left, they, they they go up and they capture everybody. They they capture King Guy, they capture the Knights Templar, and they capture the the Hospitallers, and he captures uh, Raymond of <laughs> the other Raymond. Chantillon. Chantillon. They, t- they capture them all and, and the cross. The whole Christian army is destroyed and there is no backup army that yeah. is it they played their whole hand on one battle which raymond of tripoli knew they were going to lose right and so after the so after the battle they they, they, they take king Guy and uh raymond of chatillon and they hold king Guy for for um ransom, for ransom. Right, they're going to get some money out of him, and Raymond of Tripoli, Raymond of Chatillon goes, "Well, I'm I'm worth a lot of money too. You, I'll I'll be ransomed." And uh, Saladin goes, "No, you're not going to be ransomed because I'm going to kill you." And he chop, and Saladin himself chopped off his head because and he didn't like the uh, Spitalers or the uh, but the Hospitalers and the Templars. He told them that you could convert to Islam, right? So they yeah, had. Or they would kill him, but but Raymond de Chatillon, he didn't even get a chance to convert to Islam. He was just uh, uh, his his head was cut off. But none of the Templars or Hospitallers converted because that would be like asking a Marine that just came out of basic training to you know say you're anti-American. It was never going to happen. They would have died. The hospitalers and the temples. Most of them did. I don't know. I mean, a few of them converted. Really? They they were thirsty, man. They weren't getting any water until they, you know. I don't know how much you could put up with, but I'm sure most of them, yeah, took took the axe. Yeah. But so the, that the was a massacre. Yeah, that, that was the Christian army. There was no other Christian army in the Holy Land, and it's gone, right? Yeah. So after that, Solomon is sitting there. With the blank slate, he comes up and takes all the Christian cities on the coast, and then he sweeps around, and he takes Jerusalem, and he first he says, "Well, I'm going to do the Christians what the Christians did to the Islams. I'm going to kill forty thousand of them." But when he gets there, he actually feels sorry for them, and he lets them all go. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's it's uh, he's a little bit more Christian than the Christians were, for but sure. So, so they so they lost the Holy Land except for the city, uh, Acre, Acre, right? He, that was his one, Saladin's one mistake. He left he left him with Acre, uh, and that was their foothold to get back in for the Third Crusade with Richard the Lionhearted. But that's wow, a- it was just a clear um, Muslim victory. Not only did the Christians lose all their knights and all their cities, they lost their cross. They lost their cross, and that was held for ransom. They they didn't burn it, which you think might have they might have done right. But they uh, and and Richard the Lionhearted was uh, went into negotiations. He was going to trade his sister for the cross. Exactly. So, so that's a great segue. So we're going to have to kind of end it here because next week we are going to do Richard the Lionheart and the Third Crusade. So. That's going to be um, an awesome podcast. So be sure and tune in. If you haven't subscribed already, um, be sure and hit that subscribe button and we'll be back next week.